One of the big trends NFL over the past couple of years is motion. Mike McDaniel, the Dolphins, Sean McVay, the Rams are, are guys that do it a lot. Um, we have made a big deal. The Browns, as a team, last couple of years were at the bottom. They were 30, I believe it was 31st. I think only the Eagles did less. Um, so you're going to do a video analysis. Show us what motion can do to a defense. So um, take us through what you have here and, and how motion um, effectively helps. Yeah, so it, it, we're really looking at not just motion because motion is uh, – it's been a staple for a long time in shifting where you're taking guys – one side to the other side and getting them set before the snap. What has become a really popular thing, Dave, is motion at the snap. So guys moving when the ball is snapped instead of going set. And really, you see the best offenses in the league. You saw Miami there. You're seeing San Francisco here doing this stuff because what it does is create conflicts for defenders in terms of responsibility uh, right up until the snap. When somebody's moving, like defenses come out, they call the strong side. They label that, they put their, their their front to a side specifically. They do all these different things to balance out the strength of a snap a formation, right? Or whatever. They have a bunch of rules. Like defense lives by rules. Here's how we cover three by one. Here's how we handle a bunch look. Who's how, here's how, who has the first inside route runner. Here's who has the first outside route runner. When you see guys in motion at the snap like this, you're manipulating the rules of the secondary and linebackers until the very last second. And when you do that, you have a chance of those guys becoming confused as to where their eyes are going and where their responsibility is moving post-snap that can help create big plays. So I think the Browns uh, were among the very bottom, 26th in the league in motion, period, and then one of the lowest users of motion at the snap in the NFL. We saw some glimpses in week two of this motion here where they go from 3 by one to 2 by 2 with James Prochet. The corner doesn't see him running the out and up up the sideline. It's an easy completion. This is a bunch set here where they're going to condense at the last moment. They're going to move Jamari Thrash towards the line of scrimmage and create a natural rub concept here on a mesh, a mesh concept where the rail route, because of that route run, comes wide open. They don't throw it, but that's what you're doing is you're creating some confusion at the snap to get somebody wide open. And then once you do it enough, you'll see this scheme comes up later in the game how corners, the guy covering Jamari Thrasher, has to run this really high route to get to him and can create an opening right away. It can create an opening off of a double move. Like, here's another example from last year. The Browns aren't foreign to it, right? It creates confusion on who has who for the Jags, and David Bell comes wide open for the game-winning touchdown. Like, the Browns know the benefits of it. I just think Kevin Stefanski is going to be leaning into his guys to do it a bit more. Um, you know, you know his, his new hires, Tommy Reese, and the like to do it more. You can do it in run game to create confusion on who has the quarterback and option. There's just so many benefits to doing this stuff that, you know, it, it just you need to weave it into almost everything you're doing. I, I think the Dolphins ran it at something like 60% of their snaps had motion at the snap, 80% total of motion, period. Like m making defenses think, think, of, think about this. Defenses who play uh, less with less thought in their mind, less thinking, are the better defenses. That's just always how it's going to be. If you make them think, if you make them get in run past conflict, if you make them constantly have to adjust who they're covering, how they're covering, and why they're covering them, that's where a defense gets mentally worn down over the course of a game and is prone to mistakes. And it is such an easy wrinkle to put this stuff in play all the time by dressing up your offense with this motion stuff that there's no excuse based on the benefits the NFL is showing you. And again, the teams that are doing it the most, Dolphins, Rams, 49ers, Texans, and, and, and the Lions, some of the most respected offenses in the league right now. It's undeniable amount of impact. Now, eventually, the whole league's going to be doing it, and everyone's going to catch up, and defenses are going to get so used to practicing against it because their own offense does it. It's just like the Kubiak-Shanahan stuff that was very popular from like 2015 to 2022 where, okay, it was really unique when one or two teams or maybe even three or four were doing it, but when everyone's doing it, everybody gets better at defending it. The NFL defenses will get better at defending it, and there'll be another curve that happens someplace. But for now, it's still having a massive impact. So the Browns need to be doing it, and I, I believe that the hires they made around Ken Dorsey and his RPO and option route usage between Nick Charlton, the, the young man they brought in to help uh, coordinate their run game uh, is is definitely going to be thinking that way because he did it at UConn and his other places. 
Uh, obviously, Tommy Reese is a, a nice use uh, use of RPOs, and then even more with the motion stuff at Notre Dame and then Alabama last year. And then you you think about Andy Dickerson's connection from the Rams with McVay when he worked up in Seattle, most recently as the offensive line coach with Shane Waldron. Like these are Rams disciples; they think that way. And I just expect it doesn't look the, that way right now in the preseason because they don't want to give everything away. But I certainly think you watch them against Dallas week one, you're going to be like, okay, they seem to have a feel for how to use this motion in a way that's meaningful. And if they don't, then we got to have some uncomfortable conversations because this is just, it's all there in front. I'm a, I'm a known idiot. I can see it. I think that they can see it. So let's hope that they can implement it, right? The other thing that, that was pretty obvious, the first couple of clips that you showed with the motion, um, the middle of the field is wide open. And that's something, when I think about Deshaun Watson in Houston, I think about those seam routes. I think about you know those crossing. All those things open up. I think as a result of the motion, and that's kind of the goal of it. Correct. It is. It's making people have to slide and move to account for the moving numbers. Every little bit of that stuff, and and again, motion gives away things for quarterbacks. It tells you if somebody runs with the guy going in motion, that's a man coverage indicator. The benefits of motion are far and away just so beneficial. There are some quarterbacks over the years that have said they don't like motion because they don't want the picture of the defense to change. I mean, I think Aaron Rodgers was one of the most vocal about this. They don't like the 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 picture like they have a mental picture of what the defense looks like, how the shell feels, what it all looks like. But I think that opinion from Aaron started to change as he worked more with Matt LaFleur and sort sort of the way he comes from the Shanahan coaching tree and how he has manipulated defenses with motion. We saw that in week 1 of the preseason. Uh, the Packers do it quite often, and I think that brought out some of the best in Aaron. I think we would all agree uh, in his Green Bay days late in, the, in his career here. So I get the sentiment, the old school sentiment of not wanting to do it a ton, but that's just not – the athletes are too good on the defensive side of the ball, and they're trained up to to defend this stuff since high school. They get into college, and they're seeing unique college offenses. You got to do as much as you can to make defenders think, and this is just such an easy element to make them think, make them move, get lost in space – and create windows of throws that just are not easy to replicate uh, with, without something unique going on behind it. 